class. Um, so we're moving on to some new stuff. We're going to be talking a lot about visualization soon. Uh, but there's one more example I wanted to um, fit in that I didn't get a chance to do before um, the exam in spring break. And uh, that was really about this um, web crawling business and these 429 requests uh, or responses, I should say. Um, so when you're web scraping, it's possible for the website to say, uh, stop scraping pages for a while, right? Maybe back off for some amount of time. And so in this reading, they give an example of that. This is an example response that says um, that you should wait for six minutes, I guess. Uh, actually, no, it's not six minutes. That's one hour uh, because, there's four t uh, because there's too many um, requests kind of over some amount of time, right? And so how can we build Flask applications that do that? Um, and how can we build scrapers that respect that? Um, when we've been building uh, Flask applications, we've learned about how we can return this part, this HTML, uh, but how can we control pieces like this? And um, when we do this, it's actually going to solve another mystery for you too, which is what exactly is JSONify doing? And JSONify is not only setting the content down here, but it's going to be setting this content type to something other than text at uh, slash HTML. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head over, I'll create a new Flask applica application, and try to make it so it can return something like this, this whole piece. Right, so let me head over here. I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to call this um, rate.py, and I have to do some importing, so I'm going to say from Flask, import uh, Flask, I need to build my application, so app equals Flask, and then we always put underscore underscore uh, main here, and then when we're all done, we're going to run that, so I'm going to say down here, app.run and then I need to give it an IP address. So maybe I'll say 0, 0.0.0.0. 0. Um, when we do this, this is a function that's trying to keep running forever, right? It never returns. Um, it kind of goes into this loop where it keeps calling our uh, functions or our handlers every time there's a request. Um, something that we've been doing is we'll say something like this. We'll say if name uh, equals uh, main, let me do that. And actually, up, this, up here was supposed to be name as well. Um, this name indicates the name of the module, right? So normally this would be something like rate. Um, if, if we were importing rate.py as a module, if we're directly running as a program, then name will be main, right? So this is just kind of a way, when you see this, this is a way to check, are we using this .py file as a module or as a program? Um, and some are designed to use both, right? And we don't really want to just start running an application if it's being used as a module. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And now I'm going to have my um, uh, handler, right? So I have to say app.route. So that is my decorator. Um, I'm just going to have a home page here. And so maybe I'll call this my home page. And then what we've been doing is we've been returning um, strings, right? So let me grab that string from here. I want to see if I can reproduce this. And the string we're, re um, we're returning is really the body of that response, right? So let me let me grab that piece. Okay, very good. Um, so I'll do that. And, uh, and when this happens, what Flask is doing is it's converting that to something called a response object. So it's going to take this, it's going to use that for the body, but it's also going to set some other things, right? So I'm going to just make a note here, Flask automatically uh, sets the status code uh, and these things called headers that you're about to see. So I'm going to save this and let's try running it. So I'm going to head over here to my terminal, SSH to my machine, uh, and then I had started this work here. So let me, let me try running this. I'm going to say python3 uh, rate.py Oh, uh, that's running. So I'm going to head over here um, to a web browser and go to that page. And um, and you can see that, can I just flip back and forth here? You can see that I'm seeing this HTML, right? I'm getting that same page here. Um, but what about all this other stuff here? Where is that going? Um, so if I go back to this page and I try to look for these things, um, I can go to, uh, where is it? I think it's window. Oh, no, developer tools. Where are my developer tools? Uh, view, developer, uh, developer tools. 
And, uh, and this is in Chrome, of course, and uh, other browsers will have their own uh, developer tools, but I think that Chromes are pretty nice. You might want to use Chrome for this. And there's all these different tools, some of which we've seen before. I'm going to go to the network and refresh this page. And now I can actually see this request that went through, right? So if I click on that, I can see what's happening. And, um, and so I can see the response, right? So the response was that HTML I had. Uh, but I'm really interested in these response headers. And I'm sure I had view source. I want to view those directly, right? So these are, these are the response headers. All of this stuff got set automatically by Flask, right? The response I did, right? That was in my code. But Flask was automatically doing all of this part. And that was kind of interesting because they were setting the status at 200. Uh, they're saying that the, the type is text, HTML, um, so on and so forth. Okay, so if I head back here, how can I take control of this, right? Because what I really wanted to do is I want to say something like this, say, uh, please go away and then come back after one hour, right? I want this, retry after, to show up here, right? That's what I'd really like. Okay, so to do that, we have to learn about something new, which is um, response objects in Flask. And, uh, and so if I look at this, there's a few pieces. There's the actual response, that's the body that we've been returning. Um, there's status code and there's headers, kind of the three interesting pieces. And, uh, and so I'm gonna head down here uh, to my code and I'm gonna return one of these. So I guess this is in the Flask module. So first thing I need to do is I need to import that. So I'm gonna report, import uh, response, okay, and um, and what I can do now is I can create this response object like so. I can say r equals response and then a bunch of stuff here. Um, the simplest case is I just directly put that string um, I had wanted to return before. Right? So I'm just going to put that inside the parentheses. You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this up here in a variable just to keep the code clean. Right? So I'm going to put that in a variable. So I can return my HTML code like before um, and I'm going to return that response object. And before, this was really happening automatically. Flask was creating this response object for me. And maybe just to show that, I'm going to run this again and just show you that nothing changed, right? So I'm going to kill this and restart it. And then I'm going to come back here to this page. And, uh, and let me see this. Uh, nothing's different, right? Everything's the same. Okay. But now I have this opportunity to... Um, directly control these things since I'm, I'm kind of creating this response object myself. So one of the things I could do, if I look back at this documentation, is I can see I can set a status. Um, so let's try setting a status. I'll say status um, equals 429. And uh, let me try running that one. So I'm going to kill this, run it again. And now when I refresh this, this shouldn't be 200 anymore. I'm going to refresh it. I get the same thing, but now you see, already see, it's maybe status 429 and hit that view source and, and sure enough, that means that there are too many requests coming in. Uh, so that's great, right? I have a way now to tell people to stop visiting my website if they're hitting it too hard. Um, but what if I want them to just back off for a while and then, and then visit my site later? How can I tell them how long they should go away? Um, right, I wanna get this retry after piece. Um, something kind of interesting here in the header, right? So this was the body, uh, this is the header. Um, except for the first line of the header, the rest of this is really key values. It's a dictionary, right? So um, here's my key content type. My value is text HTML. Here my key is retry after. My value is uh, uh, 3,600 seconds. And, um, and so what that actually means is when I'm uh, setting these headers, I can just give headers a dictionary, right? So when I'm creating a response object, I'm going to pass a dictionary to headers. So I can say something like this, headers uh, equals a dictionary. And then I can say things like um, retry after, uh, we'll be a little more friendly. We'll say they can come back after three seconds. Um, but really, I can put whatever I want in here, right? There's certain keys that have a special meaning, but I'm not restricted, right? I can say, hello, uh, world, right? This is just a regular Python dictionary, but those are going to end up as headers in my response, right? So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to go run that, okay? And um, 
let me let me see if I can. How much can I fit on this page? I'm gonna try to bring this out. Okay, no, nope, don't want that quite there. Can we see everything at the same time? Perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna refresh this page now, and I'm gonna look at that web request again that my browser sent. Still got the same um, response body from before, right? So this this was coming from. Uh, this piece right here and uh, the headers is what changed though right when I look at these response headers and I view the source I see there's my 429 which came from here of course and um, and then I see this uh, key of hello maps to world right that was this part right and I could have just had as many of these as I want and now I actually have the retry after as well retry after three seconds and I have that right here Okay, so I can put whatever I want um, in this now. So, so what is JSONify doing? Um, JSONify is automatically building a response for you. Okay, so in the um, there's gonna be a little exercise after this video, and I want you to go and I'm gonna give you some starter code, uh, but I want you to write your own uh, JSONify method, right? So I want you to do something like this: data. And, uh, and then you're going to do something here, right? So go back to the document and then do that, and then we'll have another video soon.